Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. The 2023 Formula E season has kicked off. We've had the first race already. So now let's go back and celebrate by watching the second race of the second season. Coming to us from Pontevedra in Malaysia. Guarantee I did not say that right. There are no changes to the grid. This is only the second race of the season after all. So we have the same field of drivers we had before. And once again, the Trulli cars did not make it out for this round and they would never appear again. So with that, let's begin looking at the second round of the second season of Formula E. And we go green in Malaysia and it's a good getaway from Sebastian Buemi as well. Antonio Felix da Costa looking racy on the run down towards turn one. He's not going to be close enough though because Duval covers the inside line. Good start from Prost going around the outside as everyone comes into the first chicane for the first time and round goes Heidfeld. He's been hit by Jean-Eric Verne in the middle of the pack. But up in front, it's Sebastian Buemi who holds the lead, coming up to the right-hander. Duval in second place, through the right-hander. Anyone making any attacks? Not yet. Bruno Senna trying to get around the outside of Robin Freitz. Not close enough. The two next EV TCR cars going side by side. Freitz is on the attack and he goes past Jerome D'Ambrosio. So that means he's up into sixth position. But it's Sebastian Buemi who held the lead and uh, the race getting underway caught us by surprise but uh, the drivers at least were, were on it they look like they were on it yeah especially Buemi he's just taken off there a little bit as he did in, uh, in China I think Heidfeld bringing up the rear of the field there having been spun at the uh, the first corner so Buemi leads Duval second the Costa third Nico Prost in fourth then it's Lucas de Grassi the other problem uh, that we have with Sarazan being out is that there was no one able to really challenge Buemi going down into turn one they come through the hairpin for the first time on this opening lap, out onto the Seri Wawasan bridge. And uh, a little look from Simone de Silvestro, but no progress being made there as they come round now to complete the first lap. But with 33 laps of racing, it's going to be a long old race, longer than last year. They're going longer, running at higher power, and as a result, they're really stretching the cars. This is the rear view from Nico Prost as he comes across the line. So, first lap and first incident, and once again, it's the unlucky Nick Heifeld who gets spun out by Jean-Éric Verne. Although it didn't seem to cost him too much time, and everyone seems to have got going. Once again, Sebastian Buemi leads the way. Will he dominate this race like he dominated the first race? We'll have to wait and see. Some good driving from Robin Thrines as well. And it's nice to see Loic Duval and Antonio Felix da Costa right at the top end of the field. But Nelson Piquet Jr. once again is right at the back. And for the last year's champion, he's uh, not had a great start to the season. We'll have to see how this race goes for him. Absolutely. Buemi leads it then. Two seconds clear now of Loic Duval. Then Antonio Felix da Costa. Bruno Senna is under big pressure here from Sam Bird in their battle over what is ninth position. Bird can overtake here. He overtook Oriol Servia for the lead of the race last year. And now he's trying to do something similar to Bruno Senna. He's looking good so far, isn't he? He's looking pretty racy. Oh, Senna got sideways there. So is Sam going to have a look down the inside here into seven? Pretty dicey move if he does. As you're lifting coast a little bit. Not close enough. No. Into the hairpin, I think. Bit early just won, and there's Oliver Turvey. Oliver Turvey's gone off, and I think that's at turn five. It is, yeah. And so Oliver Turvey in the wall, and I wonder if that could be a safety car situation. Here's a look at the replay. He's got him by himself. Swings into the left. What happened there? That was an odd, odd accident. He moved yeah. the, the barrier. I can't believe it. From the straight, from the start, the throttle was sticking on, so which was pushing me forwards, it was completely unpredictable at the mid-corner. Same problem that PK had in China. Yeah. So Oliver Turvey in the wall, and by the sounds of it, a stuck open throttle was the cause. Must be terrifying as a driver to have a car accelerate unpredictably. They're probably unpredictable enough as it is. But other than that, nothing else has really changed. Jean-Eric Verne is also out of the race. He did sustain some damage with that impact with Heifeld at the start after being squeezed by Jack Villeneuve as well. Unfortunate, but just a racing incident. And so I believe we have the safety car out so they can recover Turvey's car. Trying to just edge up on him here, isn't he? And bringing Degrassi with him. So it's, uh, business is picking up second through fifth there. Yep, into the chicane they come. Two second lead for Lowe Duval. 
and uh, it was the middle sector Duval lost an awful lot of time he matched Remy in Here the first and second ones Prost going to the outside of Antonio Felix da Costa coming no, down into turn happen. three <laughs> but can he get the cut back just like Sam Bird did last year and up the inside into four and da Costa tries to move across but Prost has made the move stick and gets up into third position and he will now start to hunt down Loic Duval in front of him how quickly before Degrassi gets through uh, not quickly yeah da Costa's a bit of a roadblock now isn't he unfortunately did Degrassi hit Prost there out of turn three and kind of punch it it almost looked like he hit him just as, as, as Prost was trying for the cutback. A great move from Nico Prost. You hear him lifting and coasting still a little bit there. The grass has got to get past him here, otherwise it's going to really compromise his race. Yeah, absolutely. Here's a look at the repo. This is what happened at the hairpin then. And uh, here is Degrassi. Bump. Little nudge on the uh, back of Nico Senna. Prost. I'm looking for Senna here in a second. Uh, well, I think this, this was after the restart. Oh, so Senna would have been in here with Sam Bird. Yeah. And that's why there's that massive gap back to Sam Bird, and here we go, whoa! It'll be right here on the apex. There you go. Oh, did a bit of damage did as well. Damage. He's brave doing that though. If you're gonna hit them, you gotta hit them with a the nose cone, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nicholas Prost is making his way up through the field. Degrassi can't quite follow him just yet, although I'm sure that move is coming. We saw a little bit of bumping between them as well. Interesting to note that Bruno Senna has seemingly disappeared and I'm not really sure what happened to him. And for the second race in a row, Senna's been up in the points and then suddenly dropped back. So he's not really performing like his uncle would have. And that might be unfair to say, but this has not been great from Bruno Senna so far. Did expect a little bit better from him. Um, Bruemi still leads, still dominates. Nothing has changed with the top two, Loic Duval is still following him. So eyes are on Nicholas Prost and Lucas Degrassi because I think they're the ones who are going to be on the move right now. He is. Uh, Loic Duval is asking his team whether he can use more energy to try and get away from Nico Prost and not be under as much pressure. Here's Heidfeld. Here's Simone de Silvestro up the inside of Nelson Piquet Jr. And Simone de Silvestro takes 13th place away. And Stefan Sarazan says, merci very much. I'll go through as well. Uh, not quite there he did it, but he did do it later on in the lap. Sarazan's up to 14th place. Uh, Simone de Silvestro up to 13th from the back of the grid. So good drive from her in the other Andretti car. A great move from Simona Di Silvestro. We haven't seen much of her, but she has just overtaken last year's champion. No, absolutely agreed. I don't know what's going on there because it's not like he's uh, it's not like he's really putting the pressure on Duval either. This is the problem with these cars, with any racing car. The balance of it has to be right in order to allow you to save fuel because you don't want to be using the brakes all the time. If the car's got an understeer, if the front is sliding, the front of the car is sliding. Oh, big moment yeah. there for Antonio Felix yeah. da Costa. That's going to catch somebody out. But yeah, if you've got the front of the car sliding, it's understeering. It really limits your ability to save fuel. Oh, oh. and there's Sebastian Buemi. Sebastian Buemi is slowing. The race leader. And has he run into problems for the Renault team? Unbelievable stuff. Buemi was commanding this race. Into the pits, uh, meanwhile, has gone. Uh, I think it might have been Nico Prost in the other Renault car, car isn't he? that dived in. So Prost has come into the pits already. Loic Duval takes the lead. Da Costa second, De Grassi third. Do you think the Renault team have reacted to Prost, Bremi's breaking down. Prost needs a safety car here. Bremi's going in now too, so he's clearly got an issue. Well, we've opened up the team radio. It's going to be and, French. Uh, so well. error, BMS error, je sais pas quoi. J'arrive. I'm arriving now, that's what Very I got. Very calm. So, so Sebastian okay. Bremi pulling down and so why has Prost come in to change now? Because then? he was hoping for a safety car. It's Do a throw of the dice. If he gets a safety car, he's in the lead. Yeah. He's, he's, he's jumped them. He's not going to jump them though, is he? But as it is, Renault now are absolutely... Um, in trouble. In trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you were going with that one, Jack. No, yeah. they are, they're completely in trouble. You know, the... the uh, Wemmy... One, two, one, go! Three, two, one, go! There we was go. The, uh, was the instruction there, so... Lo well, it had all gone quiet in the lead up to the pit stops, but then all of a sudden, Sebastian Buemi slows down from the lead, and for some reason, Nico Prost jumped in the pits as well. And Sebastian Buemi did make it back, so they're both in their second cars, but they've gone early, and that means they're going to have to conserve energy to the end. That could ruin both their races. It was a strange one, because surely Buemi's race engineer must have known what was going on and that Buemi could have got it back to the pits. And that information didn't get to Prost and... 
he came in presuming there was going to be a safety car and clearly there wasn't going to be because Buemi's back in the pits and in the second car so that has just screwed up both of the Renault's races so we'll have to see what happens now Loic Deval is leading the race Pop over Degrassi was right there with him yep you see Duval swapping cars here. There's a minimum pit stop time in the pits. That 58 oh, seconds. 58 seconds. It allows them to put the seat belts on. Well, not slowly. It, makes, it allows them enough time to make sure that everything's tight and there's no no, no safety being left out. You know, belts left slack and stuff in, in, in the, the interest of time. It allows them enough time to do all that stuff. That's the idea behind it. So wait for Loic Duval to leave the pits. Is it going to be a clean exit for him? Degrassi might have leapfrogged him here, and he has. Degrassi is in front of, da of Loic Duval and De Costa's in front of them both. So what has happened there to Loic Duval? A really slow pit stop, he's lost two positions. What time was the pit stop? Here we go, let's have a look because was it slow or were the other two guys quick? Duval. One, one minute four. Oh, oh dear. They lost six seconds in the pit stop there, the Dragon team. That is not good. All that hard work. And Sam Bird. Give it away. Sam Bird is down to 1%. Jerome D'Ambrosio is down. And just as Loic Duval gets the lead, he loses it in the pit stops. They were too slow, and now De Costa leads De Grassi. On a, in the space of the last two or three laps, we've gone from Buemi leading to Duval leading, and now Antonio Felix De Costa is leading the race. Anything can happen in Punta Jaya. So, leading the way is Nico Prost. Uh, effectively, we've still got Nelson Piquet out there, but he's yet to come into the pits, which he will be doing in a couple of moments' time. Here comes Lucas de Grassi trying to get past Antonio Felix da Costa down into turn seven, and da Costa there has gone. It's better for my race to manage the energy than than go to Shuntsville with uh, de Grassi. And Lucas round the outside there in turn seven, fairly brave move, made it stick. And Piquet stayed out again. Seven percent. What did we say? Eight percent was the number for one lap. This yeah. is going to be close for Nelson here. It is, and. Uh, <laughs> the team are waiting for him, and he's now, on... he's, he's now on his 20th lap of the race, Nelson okay, Piquet. Okay, if he can make this work, okay. he may be reasonable in this. Yeah, he's going to be able to, to, to just turn the wick up in the second, with the second car. So, more movement. It was actually Prost who's ended up in the lead, although of course he has a lot less energy. Degrassi has made his move past De Costa, so he's now in the best position to get past Prost when he starts to run down at the end of the race. And at the moment, PK is leading, and he's going very, very long into the race. It's lap 20, it looks like he's about to come into the pits. He's going to have full energy for, well, with just 13 laps left. That could work out in his favour, we'll have to see. It's going to be an interesting end to this race. It's constantly changing at the moment, although I'm sure it will settle down in a minute. Mark. So PK now has come out of the pits, but he's down in 12th position. What he needs is a, oh my goodness, Buemi's having to crawl around. Yep. So that means Nico Prost is going to have to be doing something similar. And in fact, the gap is down to 2.4 seconds. So a second's come, whoa, Nick Heidfeld. Woof. That's very impressive because, it, as we talked about, as slow as the steering rack is with these cars. Let's see, watch, watch the steering come out of his hands. Oh, that is that save of the season so far. Save of any season from me. <laughs> Last year, this year. I bet if you give him 10 million quid, he couldn't do it again. But he tried. There we go. There goes Sam Bird passing in there. Yep. And so behind them is uh, Nico um, Sebastian Buemi. So Prost on that last lap was one point. Uh, four seconds slower than Lucas Degrassi. So Degrassi is reeling him in. This is Heidfeld who's running in eighth place, but for the, uh, and there's Heidfeld waving as well. I don't think he has radio either. This is, I don't know what. Radio check, radio check. Nick Heidfeld is having one of the most interesting races in motorsport history. He got spun around at the start. He's got a drive through penalty because his pit stop was too fast. And now he's doing these amazing drifts out on the track, which I don't think he meant to, but it was amazing car control. He did scrape the wall, but that could have been a lot worse. As for the Renaults, as predicted, they are struggling. They're going very, very slowly. Lucas Degrassi is catching Prost by over a second a lap. Just 10 laps left, and it's getting pretty spicy out there. 
And honestly, just keep watching Nick Heidfeld because things are happening around him. On the dashboard there. And Prost is defending like crazy here. He's got to. It's his only option. But Degrassi gets drive. the drive coming out of the final corner and pulls alongside. Down the start, finish straight. Absolutely wheel to wheel. Prost holding the lead at the moment. Watch out for De Costa because he could be lurking on the inside when they get to turn one. Degrassi up the inside into the lead of the race. Prost drops down to second. Antonio Felix De Costa slides it and just keeps it together. He's in third place. De Costa's got to get past Prost here. He's got to do it quickly here. Otherwise. The rate that Nichols got to save energy, his, his race is, uh, is going to be done, I think. Yeah, we just saw the energy there. He had about 10% less than everyone else. So we're on board with Antonio Felix da Costa, who's going to be the next man to try and make a move on Nico Prost. And he is pushing hard. Amlin car's pretty overstewing on the power, isn't it? We yeah. saw him catch him out a couple of times. Now, interestingly, D'Ambrosio was dropped well back from Loic Duval. He's, he's 5.2 seconds back from his teammate. I think a lot of that was in the pit stops already. As he came out of the pits, it oh, was already true. that sort of gap. Because so. he gained the position from France, but uh, he wasn't close enough. Duval actually hasn't got that much usable energy remaining either. And D'Ambrosio is looking in quite a strong position uh, in Star, as that is concerned. On board with Antonio Felix da Costa then. Through the left-hander at eight. And then down into the hairpin. So it happened as expected. Degrassi has got past Prost and he made fairly easy work of it in the end. De Costa, he was doing a Nick Heidfeld and had a nice little slide through the chicane. He's still stuck behind Prost, although I'm sure he'll get past eventually as well. They're just all so much faster. It was interesting listening to Alan Prost explain what happened to both Dam's cars and why they both had to pit early. And it was a software problem for Buemi and a temperature problem for Prost. So it's actually mechanical issues that have cost dams here. Less than 10 laps left, the track's falling to pieces and there are marbles everywhere. It's going to be an explosive finale. I can just feel it. I can honestly, this is going to be amazing at the end of this race. It's going to go crazy. I can just tell. In and have a fight with the cost of a second place. You know, the, the, the usable energy left is, is very similar between everybody in that front group apart oh, from. Oh, Costa's going straight oh, on, but apart from he'll, Ross. he'll get away with that. Yeah, but he's got to slow it down a bit. Oh, oh no. he's got a problem! Antonio Felix da Costa grinds to a halt on the exit of turn two. And from a great position, Mark Preston can't believe it. And it looks as though the Aguri car has run into trouble. Will it get going again? Will that bring out a potentially a full course yellow or a safety car? But Antonio Felix da Costa grinds to a halt. The thing switched off. Oh, he's gone he's again. Got going again. again. Is that a temperature issue? Maybe. Okay, Antonio. Stay on target then, stay on target. Oh, the frustration level. Yeah, absolutely. So that was Antonio Felix de Costa's team radio. The whole thing just shut down. Goodness me, there goes Duval. Up the inside of Nico Prost and into second place. Do you think he wants the win? <laughs> <laughs> now he's gone after Degrassi, isn't he? There's Jay Penske. Happy Jay Penske. So, how long now until Jerome D'Ambrosio catches up with the back of Nico Prost? That's going to be a question. Robin Franks uh, set his fastest lap of the race that last time Robin through. Franks is right there behind D'Ambrosio. And De Costa stopped again and uh, in a bit of a dodgy position there. And he's really run into troubles with this second Aguri car. He's got going again. It wasn't actually in that bad a position because the view was quite clear. But here comes Nick Heidfeld to go past Antonio Felix De Costa. No, not quite. But what a, what a hero to zero story for De Costa. Well, Antonio Felix da Costa did get past Nicholas Prost and then immediately breaks down. Huge shame for him. It was a fantastic drive. Loic Duval pulled off an incredible overtake on Nicholas Prost as well. So he is up into second. It's going to be interesting to see where Prost finishes. If he can stick it out in the top 10, get some points, or will he drop down to the bottom of the field? I think he's got a fair gap to Jerome D'Ambrosio of a few seconds. It depends how fast the Dragon can catch him. And other than that, honestly, I haven't actually seen the back end of this field for a long time. It's mostly been focused on the front, but this has been an entertaining race. Maybe not quite as entertaining as the first race, but this has still been pretty good. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the last seven laps. Yeah, I think you might have made a good point there, Jack. Second time it's ever happened, but you made a good point. <laughs> <laughs> that the temperature issue might be in the Brogio's car because Robert Frains is, is the balance, catching okay. up. 
Control left brake region, Max 3 or Max 2. And is that the other dragon yes. car? It he's is. Hit the, he's hit the wall. Look, Lohan Lohan Duval. Lohan Duval Lohan Duval is damage. in big troubles, and that means that uh, Jerome D'Ambrosio is up into second place. Robin Freitz goes through, and he's up into third. Sam Bird is up into fourth. Where did he come from? Off goes oh, Freitz. No. Freitz is in the wall. He might have just about got away with that, potentially. No, nope. I think Duval has No, he's hit. front wing. Look at Duval's left rear suspension. So he's done that. French has done the front wing. Oh, oh the car's all over the place from Robin French. He's going to have to come into the pits, I think, as Let's we go see. on board with him. No, nope. no, the front look wing at, is OK. Look at the steering angle, though. Watch how much, when he gets in a straight line, watch how the right hand down the steering is, if anything. Yeah, oh, it's, my the car goodness. is properly damaged there. That is, Look, look at the crabbing. But keep going. Yeah, so that means Frenz is up into fourth place. Sam Bird is up into third. Oh, yeah. Frenz gets on the brake. Left see rear. That. Yeah, sorry, Three right laps. rear. Three laps, do what you can. The damage is in the right rear. Three laps, do what you can, is the message. He got caught with that. Those marbles we were talking about. Yeah. Oh, oh. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Oh, that's turning over steer, I think. That is, that's all kinds <laughs> of over steer. You know, this is a brave thing he's doing because if that lets go, going to get interesting. This is on board with uh, Nico Prost and he's gone straight on into the wall. What is happening? Goodness me, well, for the f it's so hot here. Nico Prost is now, what, 13? Yeah, it's so hot here uh, that we'll still try and find out what happened to Loic Duval. Here comes Frank, so is he, he's gone he's offline. offline. He's offline. That's Listen the problem. To you hear that, 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 that noise? Yeah. Look, you can even see it. it looks like some snow. So look, as we go through, we go past him. We're going to be too shallow coming into the left-hander, yeah. which spits us out wide. He, he, yeah, he just couldn't get it slowed down enough. Look at it. He didn't oh. have a chance. The understeer just came straight in. What a shame. <laughs> to add insult, Duval goes back past him yeah. and holds him <laughs> up in the air. And, uh, oh, and we've got a car stopped. Safety car. Which Go car is that? Yeah. It's six. It's Duval. So it's that Duval. is like Duval. So maybe it was a mechanical problem for Duval rather than... No, no, look at the suspension in the back. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe the car's sick you can jump out of the car. You can jump out of the car. Buemi stopped as well. Sebastian Buemi, he's got going again. And he... And, well, this is... It's so... Beijing, no mechanical problems at all. Here, it must be the temperatures that got they're to. really struggling with. I told you this was going to kick off. It's just gone insane. I don't even know where to start. Lloyd Duval, who has been driving excellently in this race, He's hit something, they didn't actually show it, I don't know if there's just no footage of it, but he's hit something and slowed down. Robin Freund, in trying to get past him, has run off line, slid into the wall, and is now crabbing. Honestly, you'd expect to find him in Bikini Bottom, he's crabbing so much. Nicholas Pross has hit the wall, Sebastian Buemi's stopped somewhere and started again. Then Deval stopped on track, there's no safety car yet, the yellow flags are out. Robin Freund is still going round, but sideways. And it's the order is just all over the place. I don't know where Sam Bird's third, I think, now, with D'Ambrosio second. And I think Stefan Sarazan's up to fifth. Daniel Apps in the top six. Heidfeld's had all those dramas, and he's still in the points somewhere. And Nelson Piquet's in tenth. I honestly. When I said it was going to go crazy towards the end, I did not expect it to go this crazy. I honestly, I can't imagine anything else happening in the last lap with all these yellow flags out, but this race has been insane. This is that the last lap. Last lap. Last lap. We did say it was going to get more interesting with the, when they got in their second cars. Yeah. I didn't quite expect this. Absolutely Sam not. Bird, P3. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like I say, Frames is still holding on uh, to P4 at the moment, which would still be a pretty decent drive considering he's smashed the car up on the wall as Degrassi creeps around the left-hander. There's Hans-Jürgen Apt looking nervy because there's only about a one and a half kilometers before Lucas Degrassi could take victory. And Robin Frint has got eight seconds on Sarazan, so that... He loves four seconds on that last lap to Sarazan, so right he now. should be all right. Even I can do that addition. <laughs> He's a nervous looking man. Yeah, absolutely. Here comes Lucas Degrassi through the left hander. Dear, look how slowly he went through there, taking nothing a chance. We've still got the dragon car and we've got the other dragon car off. Jerome D'Ambrosio from third place is off the track and in the wall. He's and that promotes Robin Frains up into third position. He's broke the suspension too. But here comes Lucas Degrassi through the final corner. What a topsy turvy E Prix here in Putrajaya. <laughs> Renault lost out with both cars and Lucas Degrassi was on hand to take the win and take the lead of the championship. Well done, brilliant.
that's one of the maddest races I've ever watched. Fantastic stuff. Who's going to be second? It should be Sam Bird across the line. It is. He finishes in second position, and he's <laughs> elated with that. And now, wait for Robin Frains. Look at him coming through the final corner. He's going to be all over the shop because his suspension is absolutely ruined. But here he comes for Andretti <laughs> to finish in third position. And it's a third place and a podium for Robin Frains. Stefan Sarazan is going to finish in fourth place. I mean, that's the, that is the nuttiest race I may have ever seen. Just, yeah, it's just everything. Utter madness. Sarazan P4, Senna P5. If it just, I mean, De Costa's car stopped on track twice and he was P6. So that is the end of an absolutely crazy race. Lucas de Grassi, a very deserved winner. He put in some great overtakes. He didn't run into trouble, which actually proved to be a lot harder for most people. Everyone else, honestly shocked to see them finish where they finished. Sam Bird started 14th on the grid. He's second. Robin Freins has got damaged suspension and he's on the podium. A great result for him and Andretti. Stefan Sarazan started in the pit lane and he's fourth. Bruno Senna somehow got back up to fifth. We've got Nelson Piquet in, I think, eighth, ahead of Heidfeld who's had endless setbacks in this race. And even Nicholas Prost managed to bring it home for a point. Jacques Villeneuve was 11th. Honestly, you know it's a crazy race when Jacques Villeneuve is five seconds off the points. Honestly, the end of this race was crazy. Jerome D'Ambrosio was the final victim. He stuck it in the wall from second place. Huge shame for him and Dragon, who were honestly on for such a good points haul. They might have even taken first in the Constructors at this point if they had actually brought it home second and third. And neither of them finishing the points, despite both of them running near the top of the field the whole race. Just, I honestly can't describe this ending in words. It was just all over the place. So with that, let's go have a look at the standings after race two. So looking at the team standings, Audi take the lead from Dams with a 13 point gap. Mahindra doing incredibly well in third with Virgin and Dragon rounding out the top five. Lucas Degrassi is leading the championship from Sebastian Buemi who had a very bad race. Sam Bird is in third with Nick Heidfeld and Robin Freins just clinging on. So that was the second race of the second Formula E season. It was a blinding race. Make sure you subscribe because I'll be doing more of these in the future. Going to give Formula E a little bit of a break because I've done a lot of videos on it recently. I did a video about a commentator getting confused. I wasn't having a pop at him. I just thought it was really funny and I wanted to highlight that. So if anyone thought I was having a go at him, I wasn't. It's fine. He's a good commentator. He's very energetic and he makes the racing exciting. Does everything a commentator should. It was just a really funny moment and I know it's because of technical problems behind the scenes. I've got some interesting videos coming up so 100% definitely subscribe. Thank you everyone who subscribed last week. It was a great week for the channel. It's grown quite a lot in the last few months and I'm really thankful for that. So make sure you all have a happy week. I'll be back with more videos soon. Thank you for watching and have a good one.